Hello everyone, thank you for clicking. With the Olympic medals handed out, the World Triathlon Series settled and the Collins Cup decided, it's now Super League Triathlon's turn in the spotlight. This weekend is the first of four Super League races on consecutive weekends in September, which together make up the Super League Championship for 2021. The four races will each take place in a different location, with this weekend's being in London. Each race will also take place over a slightly different format. Super League races are over shorter, super sprint distances and often change up the order of the three disciplines or add in interesting rules to spice up the racing. Each of the four races in the championship will award 15 points to first place, 14 points to second place and so on down to one point for 15th, with the winner therefore being the one who accumulates the most points across the four races in the series. There's a lot of cash money to race for in the Super League. They also cover all of the athletes' costs like flights, accommodation, food, bike mechanics and so on. So it is a really good opportunity for athletes to top up their bank accounts at the end of the season. The winner of each individual series race takes home $20,000, with the winner of the series overall taking a further $50,000. There is also another $20,000 on offer for the swim, bike and run jerseys that are awarded to the best athlete in each discipline over the series, along with an extra point in the series rankings. Athletes are also split into five teams of eight athletes with the best performing team sharing $120,000. So there's some real money to play for here. This isn't your usual insultingly small Ironman prize purse. The first race in London takes place over the triple mix format. Here the race is three short triathlons made up of a 300 meter swim, a 4k bike and a 1.6k run. However, the order of the disciplines changes with each race. Stage one is a normal swim bike run, but stage two is where it starts to get a bit funky, with the run first, then the bike and then the swim. And stage three is a bike first, then the swim and finally the run. Athletes will get two minutes of rest, if you can call that a rest, between stages one and two, and then four minutes between stages two and three. Athletes' times from stage one and two are added together. These times are then used to determine both the start order and the start times for the final stage, which is conducted in a pursuit style. For example, if athlete one has the best combined stage one and two time of 13 minutes, and then athlete two has a time of 13.10, and athlete three, 13.20, then athlete one starts first, athlete two starts 10 seconds later, and athlete three, 10 seconds after athlete two. The first across the line in race three wins and takes 15 points, second takes 14 points, and so on. There are also a couple of other small but very significant things to add. If at any point an athlete falls 90 seconds or more behind, they are eliminated and pulled from the race, and their overall position is decided then and there. To spice things up a bit, Super League also have these things called short shoots. They're like little power-ups you get on Zwift or Mario Kart, and allow athletes to cut the course on the third and final run in stage three. Based on past races, they are worth around five seconds or so. Two short shoots are on offer in the triple mix. The first will go to the athlete who completes the opening swim and transition in the fastest time. The second will go to the athlete who first completes the bike and transition in stage one. So for this one, I believe that means whoever is out on the run first in stage one, rather than whoever has the lowest time on the bike and transition two combined. So watch out for these two points as we should see a bit of racing for them, and they'll also have a lot of significance for stage three. This format should shake up the race dynamic a bit, placing greater emphasis on all-round triathlon ability. It won't be good enough to just be the strongest on the run, for example, as although you may fare well in stage one, you'll likely lose time in stage two, as the better swimmers will be able to use the final swim leg to their advantage. Similarly for stage three, although the run is the final leg, because the swim comes in the middle, there'll be less runway for the poorer swimmers to make up the time. Therefore, I expect we'll see the all-rounders rising to the top here, whilst those that are particularly strong in certain disciplines will be forced to play to their strengths even more than usual, to give themselves a bit of a buffer for the disciplines they are weaker in, that now come closer to the finish than in a usual triathlon. As with all Super League races, where the racing is short and fast, transitions will also come into play more than they usually do, as they make up a greater proportion of the overall racing time. Previously, we have seen people running barefoot in Super League to save a few seconds. However, that has actually been disallowed for 2021 for safety reasons. However, we should still see great shots of athletes doing weird things through transition to gain a few seconds. There are 20 athletes competing on both the men's and women's sides. For the men, a few of the standout names include Vincent Louis, Johnny Brownlee, Alex Yee, Mario Mola and Vasco Velasa. Martin Van Riel was on the start list, however he's pulled out of the initial races due to a positive Covid test. I'm going to make some predictions for the race, even though my ones for the Collins Cup were poor to average at best. For first I'm going with Vincent Louis, he's dominated Super League racing since it was first introduced. His running has let him down a little bit this season, however in the WTCS Montreal race a few weeks back, which took place over a very similar multi-stage super sprint format, he came home in second and was able to keep pace on the shorter distances. I also think he'll get a short shoot on the first swims, he's consistently been setting the swim pace in races this year. For second I'm going with Vasco Velasa, another one who's performed really well in Super League in the past. 
He also missed out on Olympic selection and decided to forego the final WTCS races this year in order to focus on Super League. So I think he'll come into this race fresh and ready and with a lot of specific training under his belt, whilst a few of the others might not have the same motivation and focus after the Olympics and the WTCS races. For third, I'm going with Johnny Brownlee. Similar to Louis, he is a very good swimmer, but also up there on the biking and running ability, which I think will be more important than usual in stages two and three, in particular when the order gets mixed up. He also put out a very good time in the Olympic mixed relay over a very short distance. For the women, the standout names include Katie Severas, Taylor Spivey, Jess Learmonth, George Taylor Brown, and Cassandra Beau Grant. A bit harder to predict, I think, so definitely don't take this as financial advice. For first, I'm going with GTB, George Taylor-Brown, again a good all-rounder and another strong performer in the Olympic mixed relay over the shorter distances. For second, I'm going with Cassandra Brogrand, not quite the same all-rounder that the other picks have been so far, but again, a bronze medalist in the mixed relay in Tokyo and a good swimmer as well. For third, I'm going with Rachel Klammer, who's coming off the back of some strong performances in the Olympics, but didn't come away with a medal, which I think will make her more hungry to finish off her season well. She's also a very strong runner, which should come into play in that final stage. The women's race starts at 11.30 Sunday morning, UK time, and the men get underway at 1pm UK time. Thank you very much for watching to the end. If there's anything I haven't explained very well, please do ask the question down below in the comments. Otherwise, I'll be back with analysis and highlight videos for both the men and women tomorrow.